Hello all, this is Chris Mesh today, coming to you with my counterpart Sean Labra. We are, this is our full documentary, just so you know, and we have found a magnificent find, something incredible really. It appears to be uh, some dinosaur bones actually. We are located in the high ridge, uh, sorry, house spring gravel pit. And uh, it's actually very treacherous out there. Chris, so Chris, what did you find? I found some dinosaur bones, Sean. Come, come quickly. Come. He's actually not supposed to touch the ground because he'll get sucked right through. Uh-oh. This is very tough, Chris. <laughs> Chris, this, this, is, this is simply magnificent. I, I cannot believe we have just found this beast. It's an incredible find, really. Uh, if you are back with us, Sean Lavo just braved the house springs top pit. Sorry, gravel pits. I keep messing that one up. And uh, it appears there's a lady over there who's going to get sucked under. But, um, right over there. It might take a few minutes. So we'll just, you know, explain this wonderful, magnificent find. Uh, it, um, it, it seems to have, um, um, uh, I think, I think 14. Um, it might have had more in its latter life, but um, it seems like these bones have been preserved so well. Um, its its facial structure is in wonderful condition. I I can't. I mean, it's practically sitting here. I I cannot even believe this. This beast. What is that? Oh my gosh! Did you see that spider? Oh that's my gosh! Like, that thing is huge. Let's let's go check it out. We must. Must be an ancient. Spider. Be careful where you step. I, I think there's landmines around here. I cannot believe this. Um, it seems like we have to pass the gravel pits to um, get to the ancient spider again. But um, it seems like they have they have set this here for specifically for us to cross over. Christmas. Let's Christmas. be the nation. We made it. Set this over. Similar to the Aztecs. Come on, please. The uh, yeah. ancient spider-bearing pygmies is what they are, and uh, the culture is very complex. You see, uh. They used to capture these gigantic spiders and keep them as pets so that all who came over would be bitten and die. It's, uh, then they would eat them, of course. That was actually their method of survival. They weren't very good hunters, so they had to, uh, had to use pets like those gigantic spiders to, uh, oh, come on, to catch the people. Oh, come on. Okay, okay, okay. Right now? Okay. All right, so it seems like this is another ancient skeleton of the spider. I was very mistaken earlier. I thought this was a live spider, but um, it's, it's, it's great condition, just like the dinosaur back there. Yes. Seems to be very well preserved. Um, I, I just actually uh, realized that I forgot to mention one thing about the culture, that they, like the Egyptians, used mummification which is probably why these skeletons are so well preserved. Also, also, you, you might want to take into account what these holes are for. I, I bet you're wondering for, what all these holes are for. Um, the, the spider actually used to turn over, over its prey, and um, it used to capture these, these animals, its prey, in the holes, and it had a chamber underneath it that had acid just flowing through its body. It, it was a great technique, actually. Um, no animal uses this technique, and, and it's a shame that this went to waste. Chris, any, any words? Um, I'd have to say that if you take, say, this roll of toilet paper, it works similarly like this, only assuming the spider would roll upside down, and it would just capture it in, right in there, and, the, the and uh, it, it, would just, it, would just, it would just dissolve. It, it's really incredible. Uh, it's, it's a wonder why these things actually went extinct, you know, with a fighting mechanism like that. You'd think that they could stay around for longer, but I suppose with uh, modern civilization as it is, we uh, probably built too much for these things, habitats to survive, or for them to survive in their natural habitat. Also, it seems to create a lighthouse kind of effect up yeah. here. Um, it, it was an, uh, it was a nocturnal creature, yeah. and um, when it would go through the night and it would find its prey to turn it over, it would create a light that would just spin around, and animals would just be terrified by this. Any, any, anyone? Um, yes, actually, uh, there were a few occasions when it really, really needed to hunt, and it would uh, come out, you know, at sunset or so. And uh, this this lighthouse effect, aside from being used as a uh, as you know a way to scare its prey, it also uh, its daytime prey used to lower its daytime prey, acting as the sun. And so uh, the animals that were just about to go into their burrows were uh, mag you know they, it was just a magnificent light that they were drawn to, and uh, that's that's how uh, you know these 
uh, creatures to help them to hunt a lot, you know. All right, so um, I I hope all of these magnificent finds um is very great. Um, uh, also I'm very glad that these are the ancient animals because right now if these were real we would be dead. Yes, we would all all be dead. Um, right. <laughs> these are, are very crazy. Um, they will kill you. Um. I, I'm very glad these are ancient because uh, you would not want to come in contact with these. But uh, on that note, um, we have another call. We just got a call before. We have to make a trip over here. Um, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, me and Chris have to run. So, Chris, uh, why don't you come with me? Uh, we will see you guys later.